Hello everyone, welcome. I hope you're doing well. So we are now halfway through November, which means there's one and a half months left of the year. In other words, only a month and a half left to finish whatever TBRs we've set for 2023. No pressure or anything. Those of you who have watched a few of my videos might know that I don't really work with TBRs. I don't plan or predict books that I want to read every month. As someone who's heavily influenced by my mood when I read, I struggle with that kind of thing. And I know some of you have given me some tips and I'm going to try and start working with them next year. But until now, I've let my mood dictate what it is I read, what I pick up. However, every year there are some books that I prioritize more than others that I really, really want to get to before the end of the year. And those usually become very prevalent as the end of the year comes closer around this time of year. And so now, naturally, I've got a little list of books that I really, really hope to finish before the end of the year. And I thought I'd share that little list with you guys. Partly just for fun, but partly also because I feel like it'll add a little bit of pressure and motivation to actually get to these books and some accountability because I do plan on making a all the books I read this year um, video in the beginning of January and I hope that these books will be on that list. Crossed fingers. So I've picked out five books that I hope that I'll be able to finish before the end of the year. They feel a little random, but they're just books that I've been meaning to get to for the longest time and that are just kind of screaming at me to, to finally be read. There's no logic behind it. I guess it's part of the mood thing, but they're just screaming at me to finally, finally read them and I really want to get to them all immediately. So without any further ado, let's just get to the books. Before we get to the five books that I haven't actually started yet, um, I do also want to add that there are three books that I'm still in the middle of. The Poppy War, The Complete Short Story Collection of Poirot by Agatha Christie, and also this one, The Kriegen, uh, which is a Norwegian nonfiction book about the invasion of Norway in 1940. And I'm hoping, I mean, I want to finish these books before the end of the year, but they are pretty big, and I have a bunch of other books that you'll see in this video that I am going to prioritize. I want to finish at least two of these books before the end of the year. If I can finish just two of them, I'll count that as a success. But yeah, so first and foremost, I want to finish the books that I'm currently reading, these two and The Poppy War. I mean, we cross our fingers that I managed to do it, but at least two of three should be doable. So we're going to hope that that works out for me. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the books that I've actually made this video for. First on that list is actually the book that I think I'm going to pick up first. By the time you see this video, I might actually have already started it, might actually also have already finished it. Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I don't know much about this at all, which is kind of weird considering how big it is. I feel like I've heard so much and so little about it at the same time. All I know is that Piranesi sounds like it belongs to Greek mythology, but I don't think it is. I don't know if it's based in folklore or myths or legends or anything like that. The only thing I do know is that either the writing or the story itself or maybe both is has been described as whimsical or something like that which I thought sounded really cool. It's also not split into chapters in the usual way. It's split into parts but flipping through it it looks like within the parts there are like subheadings, but it doesn't look the way chapters usually look, which is an interesting choice. As for the plot, honestly, reading the back just leaves me with far more questions than I had before I read the back, so I'm really not sure what this is about. It definitely belongs in the fantasy genre, though. It really seems that way. I don't know. The concept sounds really interesting. It's supposed to be quite whimsical. Just all around uh, quite intrigued by this one. And I'm excited about the fact that it's a relatively short book, so I have a very good feeling about being able to finish this one before the end of November, even. This next one is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Cosby? Cosby? This is supposed to be a thriller, which makes me really excited, but also really nervous because thrillers are usually hit or miss with me, and more often than not, they're miss but I'm gonna cross my fingers. I got this a year ago and I don't remember much about it at all. I think the general, very general plotline is something along the lines of the catalyst of the story being the death of a young gay couple and their father's seeking revenge. Um, 
for their deaths. And I love a good revenge story. Stories about revenge and justice are usually things that I really really like and enjoy. So thriller meets revenge story. This could go really well or it could really miss me. I just remember first hearing about this and thinking I have to read it. So I'm, I'm curious, a little bit nervous, but I'm going to manage my expectations. I'm not going to go into this expecting to be mind blown, but hoping to be. I hope that it's executed very, very well. I hope the writing is really compelling. The little like blurb descriptions on the back say the very definition of a white knuckle ride and as close to a thriller masterpiece as it is possible to get. So like, I'm gonna try and manage my expectations, but I do have high hopes. I do hope that I'll end up really, really loving this one, that I end up raving about it. I would love that. I'll get back to you guys on how I feel about this once I finally get to it in the coming month and a half. Crossed fingers that I actually do. And this is probably the one that I think is most of a risk of the books on this list. If any of them are going to not be books I really love, it's probably going to be this one just because it's so hard to not expect the most when it comes to thrillers. I'm really hoping this delivers. Really, really hoping. But yeah, razor blade tears. Next, there's The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. I am so excited. I'm so excited about finally, finally being able to wrap up this trilogy. <sighs> Those of you who have watched some of my earlier videos will know that I've been making my way through The Lord of the Rings for the first time. Yes, I know. It's a little bit surprising <laughs> that I haven't actually gotten around to these books before, especially as someone who really enjoys the fantasy genre. A little bit, a little bit um, shameful, but... I read The Fellowship of the Ring last year and The Two Towers earlier this year and I wanted to get to this one in October but I was in a little bit of a slump. I was working my way towards the end of a slump and never got around to it so I'm really looking forward to finally finally checking this off my list to finally be able to say that I've read The Lord of the Rings and thoroughly enjoyed it. These are fantastic books. I just cannot rave about them enough. The Two Towers, which is my least favorite movie, turned out to be my favorite of the two books that I've read so far, um, which was the biggest surprise to me. I really enjoy the writing and the world is so well described. It's really descriptive, really descriptive, a lot of imagery. You can imagine everything going on and what everything looks like and what everything smells like so well. Tolkien really was a masterful writer. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited to be able to finish The Lord of the Rings, finally get to The Hobbit, and get to some of the other stuff that he's written, because <sighs> Tolkien, 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 just Tolkien. Even though I know the story so well, um, I'm still really, really interested to see how the book will differ, if at all, because the other two books have had slight variations. The adaptions have been very, very good. They stayed very true to the source material when they made those movies, so I'm sure I'm not going to be very surprised when I go into this one, but I'm still really, really looking forward to reading Tolkien's words and the work that inspired such fantastic movies. I do have really high expectations. I don't expect to be disappointed at all. I'm going into this really, really looking forward to um, my experience with this. This one is high, high on the priority list for sure. I definitely plan on finishing this before the end of the year. Um, and, and just, I just need to find the time. So hopefully in November, potentially early December, but definitely before Christmas. The fourth book on my list is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is the English translation of the original Japanese. I'm really intrigued by this. It's been everywhere. Hugely popular. And I know that there are a bunch of other books in this series and they're all just as pretty, but apparently this is the best one. At least it was when I picked it up, which was granted over a year ago. When it comes to this book, all I know about the plot is that they're individual stories about different people who come to this cafe to make use of its time traveling service to repair something or see something or do something uh, in the past, maybe also the future, I'm not sure. The collection of people all have different reasons to be time traveling. The really, really interesting thing about this is that there are rules in place for that time traveling. Things like you can't leave your seat and as the title suggests, you have to finish your business before the coffee gets cold. There's a time limit to the time travel, which is really cool. That's a really cool element. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is all about because 
aside from that, I've heard that this is really emotional, that this is um, basically about confronting your past and or coming to terms with it. I'm not really sure um, where I heard that or, or if it's even true, but I've heard so many great things and I just, I'm really, really curious, so curious about this one, about whether and how it deals with the question that usually comes along with time travel. Can you change the past? And if you do, how does it influence the future? The butterfly effect, that kind of thing. I wonder if, because the book is really short and there are four different stories in here, um, I wonder how that will potentially be dealt with, if at all. It sounds like there's potential for a lot of things to go wrong. There's a lot of things that this could and should be dealing with in such a short um, book. I'm super, super intrigued by this one. And I feel like it's an appropriate read for the season. It feels that way anyway. It gives me winter vibes. So I feel like it's the right time and it's really, really short. So there's absolutely no excuse to not get to this this year. I'll talk a bit more about it when I do my wrap up video uh, in January. The last book on this little list of books I want to get to before 2024 is actually not a new to me book. It's a reread. This is a book that I really, really want to reread and I want to be able to reread it hopefully in the end of November, potentially beginning of December. Lovely War by Julie Berry. If you saw my favorites video, you'll know that this is on there. It was actually placed next to last, which I said in that video that I wouldn't mention any of the books in any particular order apart from the very last book. The fact that this is next to last is actually really appropriate and I feel like subconsciously I made that choice on purpose because this feels like my second favorite book of all time. It really does. This is a World War I romance, but at the same time it's so much more than just a romance. Even if you're not really into romance, just historical fiction, I would recommend this to you because it really does a great job of bringing to life World War I in a ton of different ways. It follows four main characters, all of whom are very different. They come from different backgrounds and they've been affected by the war in different ways. There's two men and two women. As you can imagine, the men are drafted. They're soldiers. One of them is a white British man and the other is a black American man. Then you have the two women of the story, an English woman and a Belgian woman. If you know your history, you can imagine the mix of experiences that these four people will have. I've read this book two times already and both times it made me cry and I feel like it's about time that I read it for the third time and cry for a third time. It's just quite emotionally packed. Even so, a really really interesting element to the story is that it's being told by Greek gods, which sounds so random, I know, but believe me, it makes sense. And a major chunk of this book is the story of these four people, but occasionally you'll have small interludes where we go back to our narrators, the Greek gods. My favorite thing about these little intervals um, of the Greek gods is that, well, it's twofold. First, it gives you a little bit of a break from the emotional load that this story has. Every time there's an interlude with the gods, it gives you a little bit of a, like a breather. And on top of that, the second reason is that there's also usually a little bit of comic relief. They're quite funny. It just, it feels nice to have those little breaks throughout the book because it does get quite heavy at times. All in all, it's a fantastic book. It's written in such an interesting and fun way, but at the same time, it's so emotionally heavy. You get so attached to these characters. The characters are amazing and they're just, they're so well fleshed out. I don't know, they felt real. They felt real to me and I really just, I enjoyed their story with all of its ups and downs, it was really well told, it was really well written, and it's just a really, really, it's a really, really good book. And it has been sitting on my favorites list since the very first time I read it, for which was a couple of years ago at this point. It's always going to be on my favorites list. It's so very good. The last time I reread it was a year and a half ago, so it's, it's way overdue. I'll be trying to get to the books that I haven't read yet first, but this book is is if it's not read this year then it'll be one of the first i read next year for sure it i'm way overdue a reread way way overdue do you ever have books like that where you're just like i need to reread it i i need to and you just end up rereading it over and over and over again that's me in this book again let me just again even if you're not hugely into romance but you do love historical fiction maybe especially uh, set in the 20th century, maybe especially World War One and Two stories, 
I say give this book a chance because it's a really moving story. There you have it. These are the five books that I am desperate to get to before the end of the year. I have the strongest feeling I'll be able to get to all of these. Two of them, well, I mean, none of these are particularly long. They're all relatively, they're all relatively short books. These two, I have a feeling I'll be able to get to them in like a day. Like it shouldn't take me more than a day to read these books. And probably also this one. So that's three days in the next in the next month and a half, which is entirely doable and I have no excuses. Absolutely none. You should be able to see these on my 2023 wrap up. There's just no excuse. And then I'm so excited about this one that it's wild. I am jumping in place to finally get to this one. It looks big, but it starts with a summary and ends with like 100 pages of appendixes, which I do plan on going through, but I'm going to count this as read once I finish the actual story and then flip through the appendixes at my own leisure. Hopefully I'll read more than just these ones, but these ones have to be read. You know what I mean? I'm planning to read A Christmas Carol, for example, which isn't on this list because I'm not desperate. Like if something happened and I couldn't read that book this year, it wouldn't like bother me. But I really, really, really want to get to these books so soon. I've been meaning to get to them forever and they've just been sitting on their shelves screaming at me to finally, finally read them. That's those books, the ones that I've just mentioned. So there are a bunch of other books that I want to get to, of course. And there are a bunch of other books that I will be able to read before the end of the year. But those will be like additional. These five that I've mentioned in this video are the priority the books that I'm currently in the middle of, I'm going to try my best to finish at least two of them, and hopefully I'll have time to read some other books as well. But these are my only real reading goals left of 2023. Finish these five books and finish at least two of the three books that I'm in the middle of. Hopefully, cross fingers, I'll get that done. Honestly, I don't feel like I have an excuse not to. I feel like I have plenty of time. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I feel like I've set myself up for success. Um, <laughs> I'll report back. Now I feel like I've added a little bit of pressure to myself to finally get to these books. I feel like I can be held accountable now for getting to these books. Um, and I'm a little bit more motivated now just having sat down and really talked about these books. I feel like I've hyped myself up. So I'm really excited about that. That's it for this video. I uh, hope that you guys get the reading that you want to get done this year finished. If you have books that you are particularly excited about getting to before the end of the year, feel free to share those in the comments. If you have any thoughts or opinions about the books that I've picked out that I want to finish before the end of the year, feel free to share those too. I hope you guys have a really nice day, a really nice weekend, and I hope that the book you're reading is a really, really good one. Bye!